That is who you are. It's your character, it's your nature. You're always going forward and we believe you. We have faith in you. We trust you. And Lord, in the, the midst of these circumstances and the midst of the trials and everything that people are facing, Lord, we recognize and we be still and know that you are God and that we can lean into you, that we can draw our strength from you, our hope from you, our courage from you. Lord, I pray for every person here this morning, here and in Geraldton and everyone else who may have just be online right now. Lord, I just pray that you put your heads of protection around them. You will minister to them. You will keep them safe. Lord, I pray, Father, that you will minister into the lives of the people in our church and we give you thanks and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, bless this word. Encourage us with your word. And we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord. You may be seated. Great to see you. The Lord bless you. And it's also good that we're now connected live to all the guys in Geraldton there. And the Lord bless you. It's um, really good to be able to connect with you this way, that we can do church together, different places, but also together in the name of Jesus. So bless you, bless you, Bill and Liz, and the great job that they're doing up there as well. And, um, you know, we have church today in very different couple of smaller services. And, um, you know, I know some people are even a bit fearful about coming to church at the moment. We'll still do what we can do while we are allowed to, according to government um, regulations and requirements. So we don't even know if we can do this again next week. But if we do, we'll be online and uh, we're able to then be able to still connect with each other and still be able to to worship the Lord together because that's what's really important at this time. Yeah. Really important that we actually keep Jesus the main focus point, right. not the coronavirus, not anything else that people are saying, but Jesus remains number one all the time in our lives. Yeah. So what sort of a week have you had? What's it been like? How different is our world right now? How amazing has it changed? What has occupied your minds? I know I've turned on the ABC app and the, first, um, the other day, the first seven articles was all about the coronavirus. And, you know, it's everywhere. You turn on television, you talk to people, it's, it's everywhere. Our world as we know it, in some respect, has been turned upside down. In just a few weeks, it's completely changed. Finances have changed. Food and food supplies, supplies have changed. Toilet roll paper that everyone is trying to get hold of all the time. You know, our socialising has changed. And um, I really appreciate also uh, with something we saw yesterday and Vicky made a comment to me. And I think it's actually rather than calling it um, social, what are we calling it? Yeah, social distancing. Rather than calling it that, we actually should be calling it physical distancing because we always need to be social. We've been created and designed by God to be social people. Praise God that, you know, He's prepared beforehand so that we can connect to each other through social media and things like that. And um, we have our rules of one and a half metres and all of that and so many in per building. But not social distancing, but really physical distancing for a time because we need to be able to connect with each other. But all that has changed and it's so uncertain. We see people running around from shop to shop, getting supplies, getting toilet paper, getting different things that they feel they're going to need, even to the extremes of where people travelling into country towns, probably got up to Geraldton and gone up there and to, to buy whatever they can buy to bunker themselves down and to keep themselves to last for a few weeks or a few months if they need to. But we see something interesting. I've seen people out of fear, have run to try to get a hold of these, you know, different necessities. People out of greed who have tried to do it. We heard of someone who took a photo of their neighbour's garage. It was lined wall to wall of toilet paper. And so, um, you know, we see people functioning and operating out of greed. We see people doing different things. But also I was quite encouraged on the news yesterday how people were getting together and bringing food and supplies to be able to store stuff, to be able to help people in a time of need, which I think we also as a church should be doing. To come into that place where we go, hey, we can help. We can be a light in this dark situation. You know, so it's um, a great opportunity for us to be able to. But it reveals the heart and the nature of man. It reveals our values. It reveals our securities. It reveals what we're like and, and what we need and what we're chasing after. And often it's fear-driven or it's greed-driven. So many different things that take place 
you know, it's because of where the heart and the mind is living from at any given time. You know, and I think about the coronavirus and I go, isn't it inconvenient? You know, we were planning to do things, planning missions trips, planning on doing things in church and, you know, people are planning on planning a holiday and, you know, different things that are taking place and, you know, even um, I think my daughter might be watching from Canada. People were planning to go and see her, that it's been cancelled and all this stuff that happens so inconvenient when we think about what this virus has caused and what we have to do. You know, the things are plans, we've got to stop business, isolation, and it goes on and on and on, the different things we have to do. And, you know, I believe the devil uses this type of thing as an opportunity to work. It's his opportunity to say, I'm going to stir up trouble, I'm going to cause fear, because in fear, that's the realm he operates in and what he does. So we see this surprise Thing, this inconvenient thing that has taken place. But no matter how much it's a shock to us, no matter how much it's an inconvenience, no matter how much you know, we so unexpected, the reality is it's not a surprise to God. Yeah. He's actually Lord over all of it. Yeah. He knows. And he is the way maker. He will make the way through it. He will make the way in it. He will keep on doing what he does and he'll keep on building his church. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. But we can also get, we can often get our hearts in turmoil, in upset, in fear as a, as a, um, as a result from it. And fear stifles us, it restricts us, limits us, and ultimately destroys us, destroys our hope, destroys potential, destroys opportunity, destroys things in our life. But I really believe as Christians we don't need to go down that path. It doesn't need to be like that for us in Christ Jesus. We can actually come from a different paradigm. We can live from a different place, live out of a different set of values, anchored on something that is sure and something that is real, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. I see, I believe, because I believe this time, which is inconvenient for us and the devil works, becomes the prime opportunity for God to do great things, an opportunity for his purposes and his miracles to go forward. It's an opportunity for God. I believe we actually got to have that mindset and we have an attitude of faith to say we're going to believe what God is going to do and look out for what he's going to do. Yeah. Let's turn to our Bibles in Psalm 112, verse 6 to 9. And it says, Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They will have, they have freely scattered their toilet rolls to the poor, freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. What an amazing scripture. You know, David writes these psalms, and he writes them during times of conflict, in times of being tracked down, and he looks at it and he goes, no matter what goes on in my world, no matter what goes place, takes place, I'm going to look to the Lord. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. trust in Him. I am steadfast. I am secure. Bad news is not going to cause fear within my life. Yeah. You see, our faith, and if our faith is in Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we are the righteousness of God. We stand before Him Right, we have right standing before God because Jesus died on the cross and paid the price of our sins. So we can stand before God with, in a sense of righteousness, not self-righteousness, because there's nothing good in ourselves, but it's all because Jesus died for us and paid the price of our sins. So if we're in Christ, verse 7, it says, we don't have to fear, nothing to fear. Verse 7, it says we can have a steadfast heart. Verse 8, it says we can be secure in him. Verse, and in verse 8, it says we are triumphant. We can have no fear, steadfast in heart, and secure in bad news. That's good, isn't it? Because when we get bad news, it takes us back. <gasps> what are we going to do? Panic. Our mind starts going 100 mile an hour. Rather, we can go, that's bad news. Let's go to God. Yeah. What can we do? What can we say? The first response is, God, 
What are you wanting in this place? What are you wanting? Verse 8, then we've been bad news. And then it says we can overcome our foes, such as this virus that is globally threatening the world. We can come to that place and go, we'll be triumphant. We'll overcome because greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in you that's in this world. Greater is he. You see, are we going to bunker down? Are we going to live our lives um, out you know, um, of um, you know, isolation or are we going to live and find positive, faith-filled ways to live our lives? You see, that Psalm 112 verse 9, incredibly powerful. It says, They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honour. You see, basically it's saying no matter what the bad news is, we can still go on in the name of Jesus and live and function in a way that is going to bring the blessings, the purposes and the opportunities of God into our earth. That God has called us, in spite of all of this, to live godly and to live in a way that is going to be a blessing to others for the glory of God. That we can live that freely scattered gifts, gifts of hope that we can share, gifts of love, prayer that we can offer with each other to four others, help, food, just commodities that are going to help people to get by, that we can bring that, toilet rolls, an encouraging conversation to lift someone else that may be going through a difficult time or in isolation. Proverbs says, he who refresh others will himself be refreshed. You want to be refreshed? You want to be blessed? You want to come to that place where, you know, you're not being bunkering down, oh, I just hope I survive this, but actually living in a sense of, I'm in the middle of God's purposes and plans. I'm going to bring about blessing into other people's lives and the word of God and a word of faith and a word of hope into other people's lives. Matthew, just as Jesus speaking, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, it says, You are the light of the world. No town built on a hill can be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your, sh- let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You see, Jesus is talking about us being the light of the world. It's actually saying there is darkness all around, but we have Jesus, we have the light of the world in us. We are the light to shine out, but we shine Jesus. How exciting is that? In difficult times, in times of fear, in times of discouragement, when everyone's insecure because their security has been wiped out from under them, we can say and stand and be that light of Jesus in the dark time. When everything's good, you know, we have a great time, we're still blessed, we still do what we need to do, but when it's dark, that's when we shine more. That's when we should shine more when it's in dark. So I want to encourage you, church. I want to encourage you. Don't just get this attitude of, I'm going to bunker down. I'm just going to ride this thing through. I'm just going to hope to get there. But actually, rise up in faith. Rise up and believe God. Rise up and begin, hey, I'm going to pray this thing through so that the medical people, so that those involved, so the governments can be wise, they can get um, you know, the medicines needed, that we can deal with this thing. Let's pray for them. But let's also pray one for another. Let's care one for another and keep on staying connected. It may be next week we can't do church like this. It may be next week we can't meet in the same way. We will still do it online, but we need to keep connecting. We need to keep connecting and encouraging each other in our faith. We don't do church services for the reason of just doing having a social event, even though we love that. We do church services that we come together, encourage each other in our faith. We call upon the name of the Lord and allow the presence of God to be with us, to touch us and change us. If we can't do that in that way, it doesn't mean God stops. It doesn't mean he stops doing what he's doing. He will keep building his church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. He will keep doing what he's called to do. But as he does it through us, his people, that we are still able to be that light and to connect with others and to show hope and love to the body of Christ, but also to a world that's in fear at this particular time. So don't bunker down and just say, let's hope we get through it. But let's say, I'm going to shine. I'm going to shine Jesus. I'm going to make a difference in this world. I'm going to bring hope. I'm going to bring life. I'm going to bring love. I'm going to bring something that's going to be a deposit of God into people's lives. And it can be a very practical way. It can be a spiritual way. But keep on shining for Jesus. And through the circumstance, when we get discouraged, when we get down, when we begin to worry, keep worshipping. 
Keep worshipping. You see, when we worship, we make God bigger. When we worship, we call upon his name. We're bringing his presence into our world. When we worship and connecting with God, all of a sudden, things get in perspective. Our God is bigger. He is greater. He is able. He makes a way. Encourage yourself in the word of faith. Get into the word. Keep on reading the word of God. See how people overcome different circumstances through the word of God. When we look over history, we start to see that the church of Jesus Christ has been persecuted through history, that they've gone through plagues, they've gone through all sorts of different things, but the church keeps on flourishing. It's no different today. The church of Jesus Christ will keep on flourishing. It'll keep on growing. It'll keep on having an effect because the Holy Spirit is in his church. We are in his church. The church is not the building. The church is not the meeting. The church is the community of believers. And as we, as individuals, keep pressing into God, the church is a living organism. His spirit is in us. We're able to still go forward and do great things for the glory of God. So encourage yourself in the word of faith. Get the word into you. Build yourself up with the word. Understand. Read the Psalms and start to realize, hey, when these guys went through difficult times, they, they lent into God and they saw victory. And we see victory. We will see the goodness of God. Pray with purpose. Don't panic. It's easy to panic. It's easy to worry. But let's not panic. Let's pray. Let's pray that God moves. Let's pray for protection. Let's pray for healing. Let's pray for wholeness. Pray for each other. Pray for our seniors. Pray for all people that may be in vulnerable circumstances and situations. Let's pray for finances of each other because of what it's talking about, what's happening with jobs. Let's pray over these things and allow God and bring God into the circumstances because he never fails. He never, ever lets us down. You see, I believe we've got to have rise up in faith. Build ourselves up in the word. Build ourselves up in the spirit. Build ourselves up in the things of God. Get into worship. Get in that frame of mind. Get in that attitude. Because you see, I believe we've got to live out of faith. And out of faith, we pray for healing, pray for protection. We pray for, you know, for each other. We pray for these things. But also, we've got to live out of wisdom. And wisdom tells us that we've got to act in a way that cares for others. You know, that's why... We've got chairs arranged how we are. That's why we have a couple of services. That's why we're limited how many people we can have here today because we've got government saying, do these things. So we're doing these things out of wisdom. And that's why it says, wash your hands properly and when you wash your hands, sing happy birthday two times over because that's how long you need to wash your hands. When you know, it says, use, use sanitizers, do these things so that they're practical things. It's wise. It's good. But not just that. Let's add it to our faith. Some people go, I don't need to do anything because, you know, I, I believe God. That's good. But the other person next to you may not in the same way, same capacity. Let's be wise. Let's be examples, but let's also pray into their lives, into the circumstances. So let's be people of faith. Let's be people who are going to um, have people of wisdom. As I've said, the church, and I say constantly, is a community. The church service is an event. It happens on Sunday, we do our church service. And it's good, it's important, because in that time we worship, in that time we come into the presence of God, we listen to the voice of God, we have you know, prophetic utterances, we get different things take place, God moves, we get encouraged by the word of God, you know, encouraged by each other. They're important, but that's not the church. It's a church meeting. Okay, but the church, as I said, is the body of Christ, the living organism where God dwells in us by his spirit. And that through that and from that, we're able to be, be a light in the world. We're able to bring change. So our church services may change temporarily or are changing temporarily, as we can see this morning. But the church doesn't stop. It keeps on going on. It keeps on going and it keeps on growing. And we keep believing and keep on trusting God to see God do great things. We want you to connect. We want you to connect with each other to connect with us as a church, to connect with each other. If there's times where we can help, in times that we can do and bring ministry, it's good. There's times we can pray. Don't just say, well, there's no church on Sunday. It's online, but I'm going to sleep in. Let's just say, hey, I need to get the word in. I need to get 
in front of the Spirit of God. I need to connect with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I need to do that. I need to give, keep living out of that scripture without fear, being secure. I need to live in a place where I know that I'm going to stand and I'm going to be triumphant over a foe. I need to keep on giving freely. I need to keep on serving and living that way because that way will bring blessing and will become that light in a dark place. God has called us, I believe, not to bunker down, but to rise up. God has called us. You know, we are, the word says, the head, not the tail. God has called us to be that in faith, to stand up and to show and demonstrate the hope and the love in Jesus Christ. We don't know how long we need to do some of the isolation and some of the things we do. It may even get worse, but we can rise up, that we can be a people who say, I believe God. There's a lot of people with a lot of fear right now. We have the hope and the message of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. We don't have to have fear when we're in Jesus. The Bible says he's very near to those who call upon him. As we call upon his name, as he comes into our life, he's right there for us. We can stand with a new confidence, with a new hope. We can stand with an assurity that God is in control. You see, when we stand in that insurance of God, when we stand in that security, we know that he's involved in the now and he's doing what he will do. We know that he's involved in our future and what he's doing, but he's also involved in our eternity if we rely and depend upon him. So I want to encourage you, press into God. I want to encourage you to rise up in faith and hope. I want to encourage you to stand steadfast and secure in heart. I want to encourage every person, to understand that place that we can stand as the righteousness of God right before him because of what Jesus did for us. That we only need to ask him to come into our life. We only need to ask him to forgive us of our sin. We only need to call upon his name and we shall be saved. That we all can have that same assuredness and security within our lives and within our hearts. That we can all stand in a sense of faith in difficult times. Let's pray. Let's believe God. Let's trust God in our lives, for our families, for our community, here in Geraldton and every other place at this particular moment that may be looking on and just seeing and people just searching, be able to see, I need something to encourage me. He's our hope. He's our encouragement. In the name of Jesus, let's pray, shall we?